this uh, CSRC ICTP uh, webinar. The second session <clears throat> will focus on machine learning and uh, uh, related influence problems. We will have three invited talks. The first one is given by Dr. Chuang Wang from the Institute of uh, Automation of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Uh, Dr. Wang uh, was recently um, come back from Harvard University to, this, uh, to, to the Chinese Academy of Science uh, just uh, last September. He is, uh, has background in statistical physics and uh, also influences. So, Trump, so you can now start. Okay, thank you. Thank you for introducing me. So today I'm gonna share my recent work about uh, the dynamics of a generative adversarial network in high dimension. Uh, my name is Chua Wang. I'm from the Institute of Automation, Chinese Academy of Science. So my general interest, in, interest is about uh, unsupervised model. Um, probably the most simple, uh, simplest unsupervised model is principal component analysis. The, the hidden variable, the low dimensional hidden variable Z is connected to the high dimensional observation uh, variable X and by a linear transform A. Uh, another uh, similar but different model is the so-called independent component analysis. Uh, in this model, the, uh, the hidden feature variable Z are, connect, are also connected with, um, connected with uh, the, the observation data X by a linear transform with additional assumption that uh, each component of Z are uh, mutually independent of each other. So in recently, the, the neural network uh, got a lot of att attention and there's a lot of uh, the generative model, unsupervised model uh, developed by the neural network. One, one of them is the, the uh, generative adversarial network. So, but the basic idea is, uh, is also very simple. From the hidden variable Z, we uh, we apply a, a layer of a, a several layer of transform F1, F2 to Fm, and then get a high dimensional observation variable X. And this X mimics the real world data, something like a voice or image, like this one, or kind of a human face. So the general objective is we have a lot of uh, the real data from the real world, and we want to retrieve this uh, this retrieve some low dimensional semantic meaningful feature uh, in an uh, unsupervised way. That means we don't know the, uh, any label uh, from the data. So one idea is we first build a generative model to approximate this real world data. And then we do an inverse way to attract this low dimensional um, meaningful, data, uh, meaningful feature variables. And here is a line of my recent work uh, uh, along this unsupervised model uh, uh, problem. So, Today, I'm going to mainly talk about the first one, which is published last year in New Rips. Here's my collaborator. Uh, the first one, Professor Yue Lu, is my previous postdoc advisor in Harvard. Um, and uh, the second one is, my, uh, is a PhD student uh, in, in my previous uh, group. So now let's start from the introduction of GAN. So GAN uh, consists of two parts. One is so-called the generator. Another one is a discriminator. The generator G is just a map from a low dimensional variable eta, just a random noise, and map this noise eta to a high dimensional variable x. This x try to mimic some real world data like real, like, like image. And the discriminator is just a, is a binary classifier. It's, the input is, um, it uh, can either be a real or real world data like image or the fake data from the synthesized data. Training a GAN is like a player two player game where the D, the discriminator try to dis distinguish whether an input is real or come from a generator. And the generator is try to produce uh, uh, the real data as, uh, uh, as possible as, as it can and try to fool the discriminator. And 
this can get a surprising good result, for example, like it can generate the realistic looking human face. This is the work done by NVIDIA um, two years ago. It's already pretty good and recently it can get a very, very super um, high resolution data. But, but the problem, the challenge is training GAN is, uh, is not really uh, difficult. One problem is uh, the, the, the training dynamics has multiple state streaming points. At some point uh, corresponding to a good result, at some point correspond to bad rate. But the, the, the question is how can we tune the parameter uh, or control the training process so that we can eventually get a good result. Another problem is during the training process, it, the training process can oscillate or sometimes can oscillate uh, indefinitely. So how can we avoid this oscillation is another problem. So one problem, uh, uh, the, the last one yet very important problem for the GAN is the so-called model, collab, model collapsing. In, in, in this problem, you, the GAN, if the GAN face a model collapsing, the GAN can only um, produce a very few, very few set of data. For example, he just, the, the GAN just re remember one single image from the real data. In this point, the discriminator cannot distinguish this single real data from other uh, data. So if, if the GAN drop into this model collapsing setting, it, it cannot get a good result. So mathematically, the GAN can formulate uh, in this mean max problem, where the mean, uh, the mean is over the, uh, the parameter of the generator and uh, the discriminator is over, uh, the, the max is over the, dis the discriminator, it, it, the parameter in the discriminator. The expectation is over the, uh, the, the, the real data YR and, um, and, and also the fake data YG, which is produced by the generator. And this utility function usually, uh, usually consists of, uh, usually consists of uh, three parts. The first part is given the real, real image, real data, and this, this D1 produce the probability that the input is real. And the second part where here is a negative sign here. The second part is given the, prob given the data is fake, the, uh, the estimation of this, uh, this, uh, this input is, is real. And the third term is a regularizer. And by this way, the, the, uh, the, the, the discriminant is trying to, uh, try to maximize this part, which basically gave a correct answer. And the generator is trying to, dis, uh, try to fool the discriminator. So it is trying to minimize this part and maximize this fake part. Usually solving this mean max problem is very hard, but in, in, in the machine learning, uh, I mean, community, community, the most simplest way is try is use the, the gradient descent problem. Here it's a mean-max problem, so we use a mixed uh, descent and ascent method. For the for the discriminator, uh, we can use the, the gradient ascent. Here we plus the, the gradient, so we add the gradient here. Yeah. For the generator, we use uh, we can use the gradient descent. So, so each this time we ca we calculate the gradient and and uh, uh, and, and, and minus this gradient from the, uh, from the previous step. So, so, so our work is, is try to understand the whole learning process. This, this learning, this stochastic gradient is that usually it's very hard in the, uh, in the discrete, discrete time uh, step, uh, discrete time step domain. So, so what we want to do is try to understand, try to first try to predict the performance Second is try to find the optimal algorithm parameter so that we can get the, uh, the desired results, we basically get a good gap. The, the overall picture, uh, the method is try to um, somehow uh, try to uh, map this linear uh, discrete time process to a continuous process by using some uh, stochastic modeling. That means we can build a differential equation to describe this discrete time process. Uh, what it's like a, um, it's like a describe a kind of diffusion process in the statistical physics uh, uh, model. Well, once we get a differential equation, we can transform the original uh, uh, problem, iterative problem to just analyze the differential equation. For example, we can analyze the fixed point or analyze the stability of this fixed point, which uh, which eventually gives some answer to the final problem of the original optimization problems. 
So in order to get a kind of analytical result, we, we build a very simple but so completely solvable model. So here, we, the model is, is following. So we just use a one layer uh, neural network to, uh, to model the real data. Here, Kasai is a kind of a, a feature vector, n-dimensional feature vector, and CK is a real uh, random number represents the hidden uh, feature variable. And AK is a high dimensional random, uh, random noise. And G is any, any kind of nonlinear function. And YR is a real, a kind of a real, it's just a fake real uh, image. For the generator, we have the same, we have a similar uh, model, except that we don't know the real feature vector C. So we use uh, a model parameter, omega uh, WG, to try to, uh, try to estimate this C. And CK is, uh, is a hidden variable in the generator. For the discriminator, it's also very simple. So we, for the discriminator, we have input Y and the, its uh, parameter WD. The model is following, it's, it's just the inner part of the product between the Y and the WD, and then um, apply a, a, a kind of a nonlinear function D hat. So once we have this simple model, we, we use uh, the standard the stochastic gradient descent ascent method to, to train this, uh, to train this, uh, uh, this, this, this model. And in the past few years, there's a lot of uh, analysis about this GAN process. Mm, but uh, most of work, are, uh, most, most of are draw into the so-called small learning rate analysis. In this case, they keep the dimension of the system and uh, being finite, and then let the learning rate to um, goes to zero. In this case, the, the discrete time process uh, um, converts to a continu continuous ta uh, continuous time uh, process, which is usually called the gradient flow. This is a one uh, a first order differential equation, where the uh, the, the right hand offset is nothing but uh, the uh, the exact gradient at uh, at current point. In our work, we consider the high dimensional regime. In this case, we, we consider the, the, the dimension of n goes to infinity, and at the same time, the learning rate goes to zero with, uh, with the constraint that n times the learning rate to be a constant tau. So in this case, we find that uh, the, the continuous time limit is not a ordinary, uh, cannot be described by an ordinary differential equation because the noise Cannot be it cannot be ignored. So eventually we we, we reach uh, we we reach uh, reach at a stochastic differential equation, and the first term is almost a similar uh, just a gradient uh, gradient term. The second term is a, a Brownian motion term. Basically, it's a, it, 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 it's just a, a Langevin equation in the statistical physics. And here is the con uh, the concrete form in the uh, concrete form for this. For the, for the simple solvable GAN model. Here, the WT and WG are continuous version of the parameter in the generator and the discriminator respectively. And tau are learning rates. And uh, here, G, G tilde, LT, and uh, H are some function, some deterministic function uh, dependent on the time T as well as the distribution of the, uh, of the parameter omega T and omega G. And DPT is a standard Brownian motion. So this stochastic differential equation can be characterized by the so-called uh, uh, mckeen velasov equation, which basically is a, a nonlinear uh, focal planck equation. By solving such nonlinear focal planck equation, we can, carry, uh, we can, we can compute the probability density uh, along the time. So here, is a, uh, here is some experiment. The red dot represents uh, uh, the evolution of this uh, this weight prime, uh, this weight in the real experiment, and uh, the blue curve are the probability density estimated uh, uh, by solving this integral partial differential equation. And we can see that this um, the result, the theoretical prediction meets the the, the experiment pretty well. So this is a, uh, this we call so-called the microscopic state uh, description. In this case. We, th there are three vectors that um, play a very important ro role. The first one is uh, C, the true, parameter, the true model parameter in the ground true model. The second vector is uh, omega g, which is um, 
the vector in the generator, the, the parameter in the generator. The second model, the third model is, uh, uh, is a parameter in the discriminator. But in this, but in previous case, the, the integral partial differential equation is usually very hard to solve. We can only solve it numerically. So, so next step, we want to try to use an even simpler uh, way to, to calculate the, the, whole, uh, the, uh, the whole training dynamics. So one way is we can define the uh, just a three a three parameter we call the macroscopic state, also uh, called an order parameter in statistical physics. This three variable nothing but uh, the angle between these two uh, these three vector. For example, the Q T D is the angle between the omega d and um, uh, omega d and and the c, and Q T G is angle between the omega g and c, and R T is angle between omega d and omega g. By this way, we uh, we prove that when the system dimension n goes to infinity, this is three scalar convert weakly to a unique solution of a, uh, of a system ODE. And this, uh, this ODE is, um, has the, it's just a first order ODE with a little bit complicated nonlinear function g. Uh, we, we don't, I don't list g here, but you can uh, see it in the paper. In addition, we prove it rigorously that look, for any finite system with the size n, its limit is uh, the difference between the finite system and the limit, uh, the limiting value QTG is, um, is bounded, is upper bounded by a constant C over a square of T. That means when, N, when the system dimension N goes to infinity, the convergence rate is one over a square of N. And here's kind of a simulation. The dots are the simulation from the real experiment and uh, the curves uh, the solution by solving this ordinary differential equation. And we show that, in fact, this ordinary differential equation characterization is, uh, is pretty, uh, is a standard tool in the statistical physics. But uh, for, for a long time, um, people don't really care about the, uh, the rigorous proof. And in our work, our early work in the reference tool in published uh, two years ago, uh, give a rigorous proof that uh, for such online, uh, Online learning process it converge in the large system limit to to a solution of ODE and these proof tricks are also used to prove some other model for example like the two two layer neural network model in an unsupervised way. So here now let's look at the detail about this uh, this, uh, this ordinary differential uh, equation. So once we get this ordinary differential equation, we can cast the original problem to just study the, uh, the, the dynamics or the fixed point of, uh, of this uh, differential equation. So we, we, we see that um, we just, we first we did an experiment that we fix the learning rate of the discriminator and then uh, change the learning rate of the generator from 0 0.1 to 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 to, uh, to 1. And we show that the dynamics uh, are dramatically different. For example, in the, when the learning rate of the generator is small, we get a pretty good result. The QG convert to minus one, that means the, 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 the generator are perfectly, almost perfectly aligned with the true parameter uh, C. And the, the, the dynamics of the discriminator, we can see that it firstly gets alignment to the true model, and then it gradually decreases to zero. That means the QT, the discriminator first at, initially, it, it quickly learned the, the true model, and then because of the generator get a better and better result, the discriminator are, um, are, are fooled. So this is a good result, and this is the result we want to um, we want to get. But if we somehow increase the learning rate a little bit, we find that uh, the, the the whole training system are not stable anymore. It become kind of oscillate indefinitely. And if we if we further increase the learning rate, we can see that the even the even the generator are oscillating and they completely completely forget where it has been learned. And if we further increase uh, the learning rate, surprisingly, it gets another stable result. Even though it's not as good as the first one, it is still a, a stable solution. So basically, the the whole training process is very complicated, depending on how the parameter you choose. In order to characterize uh, this, uh, 
this phenomenon, we analyze the fixed bond of, this, of, of the previous ordinary differential equation. And we show that surprisingly, the fixed, uh, the fixed bond is not unique. There are uh, at most five fixed points. And each fixed point represents a, uh, represents a face in the face diagram. Here, the face diagram, the horizontal um, axis is the learning rate of the discriminator, and the vertical line is the ratio of the generator and the discriminator's uh, learning rate. And we show that um, there are two non informative results. For example, this non informative, non -informative phase corresponding to the uh, trivial solution, that means all results are zero. Basically, it learns nothing. And this inform informative result corresponding to this one. In fact, the, the four point, sorry. In fact, the four point, uh, four red point, one, two, three, four here represents uh, this, this uh, four finger here. And we show that in the face diagram, there's a black region, uh, no stable, uh, no fixed bond are stable. That means here, if you choose the parameter with, uh, in this region, the system will oscillate like this two, uh, like this, this is two point and this two finger indicates. So this this is one this is a picture from one dimensional problem. Uh, in, the, in, in in that paper, we also analyze the multi dimensional case. In multi dimensional case, the face diagram the face diagram is similar, but the the successful successful case uh, successful phase are separate are split split it into two phases. One is uh, completely successful, and the second one is only successful, only half of them are, are retrieved. Here is the result. So we see that if the learning, if we choose the learning rate, um, kind of all the noise to be, uh, to, to be a very small, we get, very, we get an oscillated result. And then if we increase the noise, this is pretty uh, interesting, if we increase the noise, the, the system become stable. And if we further increase the noise, uh, some kind of some, some feature are lost, cannot be estimated from the data. In fact, this is three line, uh, this three point represents this this black region and the info one region and the half info region. If we further increase the noise, we get a non -inform, uh, informative region. This means that all the um, uh, we cannot learn anything from the data. And from uh, and more, more precisely, we can analyze this, uh, this, 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 fit, this phase in a quantitative way, and we characterize when, uh, when this informative result we can get, we can get. and this get, give uh, this, give this uh, inequality. That means the learning rate times the noise should not, should not be very small, not very large. If it is too small, we get, um, uh, we, we, we get an oscillation state. That means we draw, we, uh, the system drop into this, uh, this black region. And if we, uh, if we have a large noise, it will drop into this, this half information uh, state or even non information state. So in order to keep the, the system into this good inform, information state, we have to carefully tune the parameter into a very narrow, uh, narrow region of this prim in the parameter space. So uh, one take home message is that uh, if uh, noise helps the convergence, basically if you feel the, if you, if you feel there's some oscillation in the training process, you can try add some uh, noise artificially, maybe it will uh, increase the noise. This is a practical method already, already being used in training the GAN model. So as a conclusion, uh, in this talk, we present an exact and tractable analysis of the training dynamics of a, a simple GAN model in high dimension. Uh, we specifically, we analyze a training process at two levels. The microscopic level are deterministic, described by a coupled ODE. And uh, in, the, in the microscopic level, we, we show that the microscopic dynamics are still stochastic. The evolution of the detailed weights uh, remains stochastic and it is characterized by SE. This is different from previous work where in the microscopic state, uh, the, the, the smaller rate analysis shows that the dynamics are still deterministic. In that work, we, can, we cannot get any uh, results about how the noise helps the convergence. And finally, we show that the noise level is essential to the convergence. The strong noise leads to a failure of the feature recovery, but the weak noise 
cause uh, oscillation. So we need to carefully tune the noise and learning rate so that we can get a good result. And uh, that's all. Thank you. So any question? Oh, I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, do, you, do you see uh, this uh, phenomenon of collapse uh, in this simple model? Uh, you, uh, uh, could you repeat your, uh, your problem? The model collapse, right? Uh, the, the, no, the collapse uh, problem. So the fact that... Yeah. Uh, yeah. So your question is, do, do I experience the model collapsing in this simple model, right? Exactly, yes. Yes, sure. So in this case, so in this experiment, it shows the mode collapsing, the, the, the third finger. When the noise is very strong, when the, when the variance of the noise equals to four, we get a mode collapsing. We can compare this finger and the finger in the middle, the one in the middle. Here, the two lines get, the two, the two features, they are almost, the two features are, are almost kind of, recovered but in this finger in the top finger there's only one feature are recovered okay thank you yeah so here we call it uh, kind of characterize when there's the model collapse and basically here we call it the half informative region yes mm. so uh, mm. are there other questions in the comments Okay, uh, if you know, uh, we thank Tawa again, and then we move to the next speaker, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.